Hello and welcome back to coverage of the PDGA Euro Tour. We are at the second stop in Konopiste, just south of Prague, Czech Republic, and we are excited to be bringing you Round 1 Front 9 MPO feature card coverage brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood, and once again with me, Elias Lukunen. Hello guys, I'm looking forward to this prestigious event. It's absolutely one of the most looked forward to courses of the year. And let's look at the players we have. We have Paul Macbeth, obviously a six-time world champion from America, representing the uh, representing US, having uh, the third event of his US tour, winning the Pro First to last weekend. Let's see if, we, if he can grab another one here. Joining him, Peter Striegler, a young up-and-comer from the Czech Republic, known for his well-rounded game and strong skill set. I think he's well-equipped here, going to have some local support and happy to have him joining us. And next up, Niklas Antila, also coming from the US, even though he's originally from Kuopio, Finland. Having a decent season in the US so far, and this is his first event in Europe. He's also the 2021 European champion from the same course, so strong memories here for him. And another local hero joining us, Jakub Semerad, shown to have all the tools to play a strong game throughout Europe, mainstay on the lead cards. He is getting so much support from the crowd here. It's incredible to see the enthusiasm and the passion for these Czech players from the local crowds. And we'll get it started here on hole one. A par 3 122 meter downhill shot with OB lining the left side the entire way. A lot of players will opt for a putter or mid-range backhand on the right side pushing that rightmost tree line. It's very common you actually see people crash the trees as you do not want to fade left at all without risking significant danger. Really it's the nose control, nose angle control and height control that's important as anything released nose up or too high will almost certainly fade out left into OB leaving you with a tough drop zone to contend with. First on the tee. Yeah this hole, From even though the distance is 122 Who's meters, right place closer to 90 or 95 World since it's so far downhill. Paul, and also one thing to note as Paul gets the crowd going, we had a decent crowd today actually on the on the Franz Ferdinand disc golf course. The hill is slightly grading from right to left as it's also sloping downwards. So that's why Paul Macbeth, for example, here, probably going with the sidearm to avoid some skips on the very fast green on hole one. But he leaves it a little bit short. That's a decent start to the tournament. You really just want to avoid the left side OB here. From Moraski, Krumlov, Czech Republic. Sponsored by Discmania, your two times Czech Disc Golf Tour winner, Peter Striegler! Peter here taking the tee, another player with huge support from the local crowd. And I think a young man, not sure how much feature card and lead card coverage he's had, but with a high rating and some incredible performances, I think going to do well here today. Also opting for the forehand. It is much harder to park the forehand, but significantly safer as he swings it out wide, I believe finding OB long, he'll be left at the drop zone, First which is not an easy drop putt, um, honestly Finland. just a almost surefire four Sponsor for a lot of players. Mania, yeah, the drop zone European is really, champion. it's even Niklas though it's only Antila. about 45 meters in distance, it's a really tempting shot. As we see, Niklas going with a slow, stable approach disc. He's actually going with a C-line tactic, which is has a really small amount of glide, uh, which is important for the backhand shot because you do not want this shot to be gliding towards the left. And he's going far right with uh, not much height. And looks like he played the line pretty good. Unfortunately, just crashing the right side trees, but that's still putting about uh, just outside the circle. That's a good start to the round for Nicholas. From Schlebe, Czech Republic, sponsored by Latitude 64. Your current world putting champion, Jakub Semera! <laughs> Amazing intro for Jakub there, world putting champion, coming off his tour in the United States. His first event was in Croatia last week, and 
knowing I know for a fact that he's extremely happy and proud to be performing in his home country of Czech Republic as we see Jakub Semerad on the tee now, also opting for the backhand. He's pushing the right side tree line as so many players do, and he's looking to have this fade just before the branches, gets the skip. Amazing, and you can see that still almost snuck OB, even with a super right side release, very common, and that's a great shot from Jakub, I believe best of the bunch. Yeah, that's a super scary shot to try to park the hole, and uh, you can see Jakub has some experience on this course as well. He did very well in the 2021 European Championships too, being in the on the lead card final round, as we see. Better going for the conventional forehand approach from the drop zone. He's inside the circle. They're gonna have a bit of a tester putt to start the round. Let's see where those nerves are at. And let's see where Paul is at. Coming off the win of the Pro Forester tournament. Just a little bit low. You saw he was putting with tailwind, indicated by the flag on top of the basket. He was also putting right directly towards OB downhill. So contributing maybe to some tentative putting. Niklas there, very confident. A great birdie to get him started and a good range to let you know, yeah, my putts, it's on today. Yeah, he's certainly one of the best putters in the whole country of Finland. Rumors say that he putts a thousand putts a day during winter. As we see Petr cleaning up from inside the circle. That's a good putt to start off the round, you know. It's, a, it's certainly not a gimme, especially for a player that probably isn't very used to playing with, uh, with the likes of Paul Macbeth, Niklas Antila and Jakub Semerad. And Jakub there, really nice confident putt as well, coming back up the hill. That is the one nice thing about going slightly long, although you bring OB potentially into play, gives you the confidence to run it stress-free. As we walk away from hole one with a par for Paul, bogey for Peter, and birdie for Niklas and Jakub. We move on to hole two. Par 4 sitting at 169 meters. Don't be deceived by the distance. This one is uphill the entire way. Players will opt for a large swinging hyzer through that initial gap that wants to fight around this corner here. A very common landing zone is slightly pinched just as the drone is now, where players will then need to continue battling uphill through these thick trees and fight their way towards this guarded basket behind this final guardian on the right side. For a lot of right-handed players, it's going to be a big backhand hyzer and then a forehand hyzer or turnover backhand, depending on how pinched. Oh, didn't make the putt, unfortunate. Yeah, this 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 drive plays extremely long, even though you might want to get only 100 to 110 meters of distance off the tee. It is so far uphill that it plays closer to 130 or 140 meters. As we see, Niklas playing pretty much the perfect line, a little bit of a high flip up gliding hyzer fighting towards the left the whole way but he ends up a little bit short and just showing off how far you need to throw off the tee here Jakub also pushing this one a little bit straighter has enough height to now fade out to the left a really good shot will fight left pretty severely getting around the corner i think he's a touch straight he'll be pinched it'll be a tricky birdie from there yeah for these longer throwing players it's mostly about distance and height control because even though if you miss the line just a little bit if your distance is correct as we see paul here with the perfect shot that's absolutely perfect you can see he really had that distance and line but even if paul had missed the line slightly to the right or to the left he still would have had the right distance so good good shot shot shape and good distance control as we see peter going for a higher line possibly trying to move even more left but unfortunately he's short to the corner and i think the left side short corner is actually better than going long and straight uh we can see that peter has some trees here to contend with but able to go straight towards the basket with a forehand that's looking pretty good and he's absolutely parked the hole that's a great scramble forehand from there what a start from peter will most likely be snagging a birdie after his bogey on one Great composure to fight back, get that bounce back stat. As we see Niklas just at the edge of the tree line trying to battle his forehand up there. Hits that last guardian, a very common gatekeeper to the green that tree. As we see Paul fading just before the trees on the left gets it pin high about 5 meters. This one really is, if you have the distance, a fairly reasonable birdie. It's just dependent on getting a good tee shot. 
and then hitting this small gap on the upshot. As we see Niklas there connect with a branch. Jakub, rather. Yeah, Jakub there, right? I think, well, just as you said, it's really the drive on this hole that's difficult. You know, it's a, it's a very routine sidearm if you have the perfect drive. As we see, for example, Paul having to throw just a straight to fading fairway. Niklas from the knee. Very comfortable position him for him with a spin pot, but unfortunately just sails it high there. And Paul to clean up the routine looking birdie there. That's a good start to get that birdie after par on hole one. As we see Nicholas now bringing it back. <clears throat> he mentioned rumor is he does a thousand putts every day in the winter. How many does he do in the summer? I don't know. Hopefully at least as many. Looks like uh, his putting stroke is looking pretty solid. So probably at least a thousand. As we see Petr tapping in the great birdie after a slightly errant drive. A really, you can see he knows what side of the fair fairway do the mistake on. You know, fading left of the drive and still having the chance to get the birdie there. And we move on to hole three. A par five sitting at 317 meters. Off this tee shot, you have a right to left sloping fairway with a low ceiling on the left and right side. A really good shot will get around this corner into the opening. A lot of players will throw a turnover backhand, likely some rollers, even potentially a big power forehand. The fairway then opens up a little bit as you fight your way between all of these beautiful large guardian trees. You have a right to left sloping fairway continuing as you push the distance. You have the basket tucked away way downhill on the left side. Very common on the upshot players are 20 to 30 meters short. Although if you have really big distance, it has been known to be an eagleable hole with two perfect shots. Yeah, this hole sets up beautifully for the backhand roller with something quite understable. You want your roller to hold straight for a long time and then finish uh, pretty strongly to the right at the end. As we see Paul hitting an understable disc, not really turning to the right at the end as much as he would like, just pretty much staying on the left side for the whole entire length of the shot. That's a very far roller, but uh, for, to be, for it to be in a good position, he would really like to be 30 meters to the right from there. And he's actually playing with an OB on the left side, Paul's roll. The common mistake for the roller is that it doesn't fight the slope right enough and ends up down left as we see a solid forehand from Peter. It doesn't get the full distance around the corner, but looks to be right in the middle of the fairway, a good spot. And uh, there is actually a Mando way down left that most players will never even bring into contention, but Paul will be forced to come back into the fairway rather than take the back door. Niklas there with a solid roller gets caught up on that last tree he wants to beat. I think a, a tough stance, maybe even a standstill for him on his next. Yeah, that's really the tree that you want to move right before of, uh, with the roller. As we can see, Jakob here throwing the perfect line, flipping over uh, higher on the hill. And he's going to have a straight look at the, at the gap towards the basket and maybe even a slight chance to get a long, long eagle look from there. Peter from the forehand lie he's needing a long hyzer but as he flips this one over I think fortunate to find some branches slowing his disc down as that was moving not in the direction I'm sure he wanted we see Nicholas here from the standstill also opting for a forehand he's not going to be able to get off as much distance but still positioning himself in the open to try and swing a big hyzer about 130 to the basket to tr still try and find birdie and Paul is so pinched on the left side that he actually has to go with the forehand roller in order to move at all towards the basket. And uh, he's going to have a long way to go, but it's still a shot to the basket. This approach is playing quite uh, sneakily downhill. So even if you're far away from the basket, you really have a shot. For example, we saw Jakob throwing it a little bit nose up, fading to the left. And Paul, unfortunately, doing the same... You can really see the left side trees before the basket are um, kind of pulling these discs, really showing off that right to left sloping hillside. 
A lot of players on the approach will opt to play way out to the right and let the disc funnel towards the basket naturally with the slope. As we see Peter shaping an awkward flex, I think some more fortunate branches to slow him down as he was fading towards OB left. Nicholas now with an open look. If he can put this close, it will give him a great birdie chance. This is the width you most commonly see as the disc loves to skip and slide and bounce and roll. He gets towards the basket, still about circle's edge, but a great example of the more traditional approach line. Yeah, you can really see how wide he played that shot. And uh, even though it looked too wide out of the hand, uh, it's really inside the circle there. I believe that was Jakub pitching up for the, for the birdie after the long drive and a uh, slightly errant approach. Better just laying up for the, for the par there. And Paul actually has a look. A little bit of a low ceiling, uphill, maybe 15 meters. An honest bit, he goes out the right side. This is a hole that, especially on these par fives, requires three good shots and then a putt to birdie. So we see Niklas here. Fantastic putt. The repetitions are paying off for him. He's the previous champion of the last tournament here. We mentioned the European Championships in 2021. This is the only tournament that has happened since then on this beautiful Konopiste layout. The history in the making here on a historical course. Yeah, and I would say the, the field of this event is actually about as strong as in the European Championships. Maybe a little bit weaker this time. So I don't think Niklas is going to think about that, but he might even have a little bit less of a challenge in this event although there are some of some of these great players some like Paul Macbeth six-time world champion obviously as we see better cleaning up for the par it's really not a hole that you want to take par on it's one of the more easier easier holes on the course but uh, five is okay and moving on to the fourth hole you see here what is a deceptively difficult hole Hole 4 is a 109 meter par 3 that is also softly uphill. You have a very tight gap to hit here. You need to make sure to turn something over through the gap as you have a pretty deadly green. This basket perched right on the edge of a drop off. As you see that putt there, very common result. If you miss and go for it, you're often rolling down to circle's edge, if not further. I think for a lot of players, they're going to shape a fairway through the gap, turning over and try to have a soft fade towards the end. And fun fact, I don't know exactly which year, I think maybe 2016, Paul Macbeth has aced this hole before, so if you'd like to see it, go search that clip after this round, but stick with us, maybe we'll see some magic here again today. Niklas on the tee. Yeah, going with an understable fairway driver there, pretty much a perfect shape for this hole, although missing the line just slightly to the left. That was really looking perfect, you want that soft turn, and uh, looks like he had the perfect speed unfortunately just hitting the left side trees and he's probably gonna have more of a layup than a run from there i would think Jakub also trying to get the soft turnover but just not getting the turn he kicks a little bit forward and he's actually looking up at the basket so if he's uh, feeling like it he might even run it from there although i would still think that most likely he will lay up I would agree, almost anyone who isn't on that upper plateau, who is putting uphill, even though it is up, uh, almost always a layup, as we see Paul really shaping the fairway beautifully, getting that late turning flight and a soft pan out at the end. He's about seven or eight meters with a death putt for his birdie. It will show you the danger of this screen as we see Peter now getting a little bit more on that right side. He fights through the inside, catching a branch, and as he fades out, Fighting the top. He is also in a great spot to try and potentially putt for his birdie. A lot of right handed players opting for a hyzer ish putt. Uh, it often fades left if you miss. So, from here, I think for Niklas, especially, likely just a layup. You play it to the right. If you want it to sit down on top. And you saw he knew out of his hand that was a little bit too far left. He'll be left with the tester coming back up. Yeah, many of the players are really looking forward to putting this approach flat, landing it flat and at least a couple meters right off the basket. As you see, Jakob landing right off the basket, but still the disc trying to fight its way towards downhill. As we see, 
Petr, unfortunately, just coming coming up short for the birdie. Paul trying to make better use of that drive. And that's a good putt there. Really scary putt. If you miss that, you're likely to be on the edge of the circle, as we said. But good composure there. And uh, this is also one of the more difficult birdies on the course. As Niklas is going with this traditional push putt from close distance. Really famous, famous putting stroke. Even uh, getting the getting the name of Nick and Osto in Finland. Very popular amongst many players, especially juniors. And as we see, three pars and one birdie. Quite a solid result for our feature card here. Very rare the card plays that one under par. This tournament is brought to you by Discmania. We are here on hole 5. Par 4, 219 meters. You are once again throwing off an elevated tee with a right to left sloping fairway. A lot of players will opt for a power forehand or turnover backhand that gets around this corner here. More of a straight shot than something ending to the right, but if you have the distance it helps to bite off some more distance of this approach shot. Being considerably uphill with some guardians, it might look like a simple 90 meter shot to the green, but it is playing at about 110, 120 even potentially, depending on how far you get on the first shot. This is, while very attackable, needs you to have good, accurate straight shots and keep it in the fairway. Yeah, and also, even though the drone flew the left, left side route, which Paul is also going, apparently, many players will actually go for the high turnover just around the first tree on the right. And Paul plays an okay forehand there, kind of lacking some distance. Uh, I think he hit some branches there. He's gonna have a long approach from there. But Niklas is showing the high Anheuser here. And this is very popular. Actually, he's not showing the high Anheuser, even surprising the commentators here. Rather going for the roller for the, for the straight gap. And that's just just an incredible shot he got great distance he's only gonna have about 50 to 60 meters from there it's hard to express how good of a shot that really is especially controlling the turnover angle from the elevated t having that roller control can be really tough we see jacob here with the common mistake not turning it over enough as he will naturally fade with the hillside to the left that will leave him a considerable distance up to the green probably playing like 130 maybe even 140 from where he is but safe. Yeah, the good thing about the left side is that you have a really open approach compared to this shot that Petr is going for. He's going for the high turnover, just trying to hold the disc turning to the right the whole entire flight. Um, we didn't quite see where that ended up, but if we accept the fact that he's uh, in the open to the right, he's probably going to have a bit of an abstract look. And Paul, so short there off the forehand, finding the branches. He does play that secondary fairway on the right side, tries to play the hyzer, but it's just so demanding from there. Ends up looking like circle three, still uh, 30 or so meters to the green. Yeah, and Jakub almost finding the left side OB here off the drive. You can see how hard he throws the approach, even from about 100 meters away, having to throw it almost full power. He's going to have a putt, uh, but he's not quite parked, so a lot of work to do. Peter now playing that back door, looking like a forehand approach. Fights his way, I believe, up there. Really nice use of that high turnover shot. While riskier, it is a greater reward if you can hit it. We see Niklas from a perfect position. Best drive I've seen on this hole. Simple upshot, forehand hyzer into the hill. Gets a soft skip, and he has five or so, six meters for his birdie putt. Incredible tee shot there to give himself an easy, stress-free upshot. Yeah, not many players going for a slow disc after the first shot. As we see Paul trying to run it with the low ceiling and the wind and the sloping green. Just barely misses it, and with the sloping green, 
he might have a bit of a comeback left. Jakob, you can just see how thick the branches are up on the um, short right side of this green as he just lays it up under the basket. Peter now with a good look. Unfortunately, out the right side, that low ceiling coming into play, I'm sure. As you see him there with a short putt left for par. This is Niklas for birdie. Oh, as he hits center chains, but a little bit high. Likely the wind coming into play there as well. It's a common result when you hit high in the chains that the wind can disturb the flight a little bit more and bring it out. Unfortunate par, but great, great. Uh, some good shots there from Niklas. Paul as well, battling his way up for a par. This is, uh, although set playing at only 219, still requires huge distance to find the birdie and two accurate shots. It is by no means an easy hole, although it may look open. And another par from Peter. Yeah, it's certainly not an easy birdie, but uh, this hole five is starting the part of the course that these players would really like to score on. Um, holes starting from hole five are really more difficult to bogey. So these players are really looking forward to not getting any bogeys from now on and hopefully getting as many birdies as possible as the course is getting a little bit softer from now on. And this hole is no exception. Playing a little bit softer here, hole six is a 115 meter par three. Once again, sloping softly right to left, although not as severely as hole five, you need a straight shot to softly turning backhand or forehand that gets between these final two trees the forehand can even play left of this tree on your frame, although the most common result, the most common error rather, is finding that left side OB if you fade out the backhand too much or overturn the forehand. It is a straight shot, although the right to left slope encourages something ending to the right. Yeah, and especially the left side OB that was actually added for this year, never before on this hole has been a left side OB. I think making more players try to finish stronger to the right as we see Paul maybe a little bit little bit tentative with the OB finishing well in the circle two for his drive Niklas actually going with uh, with a straight putter shot here showing off that good control of the slow disc he has this looks a little bit low I think he really wants to get it a bit more up in the air to get the distance although that is uh, still putting Good angle control there, really no chance of ever fading out to the OB. As we see Jakob on the tee now, also going to be shaping a soft Anheuser backhand. So he gets this one flying. This is fading too early, and given the height, he will be bringing that OB into play, catching the skip. He is right on the edge. Tough to say from the camera angle, I believe he has found OB. Uh, what stability of disc would you say plays nicest for the back end here, Elias? I think we just saw a great example of that as Niklas went with something straight, slightly understable and Jakub with slightly overstable. You can really see Petr also going with a perfectly straight disc. That's a great shot there. But really, to match the hillside and not fade too far left, you really want to go with something straight to slightly understable if you're throwing a backhand here. As we see Paul up first, the forehand definitely the safer of the plays, although it has left him with a long putt. Low from the hand, also catches a tough roll as he finds his way sliding. Also, OB, that will be a tough penalty stroke given that he played the safe line with the forehand there. Niklas now. Let's see if he's able to keep that good looking putting stroke up from on circles edge just hits high left side chains unfortunately not catching but stays right there doesn't get that nasty roll that Paul got Jakub also a little bit high you can see the leaves blowing a little bit but it, it was really not an extremely windy day but still a little bit of wind that's actually not common for this course it's usually a very calm course with wind and Paul gets the bogey putt in there, in the middle. Really not a hole you want to ever bogey, but if you have to, it's uh, good to get that putt in the mi middle of the basket. As we see Peter now, 
up to his birdie putt. Very solid. A good throw and a good putt. It's an interesting green because OB on that left side is just about 10 to 12 meters away. So if you do find OB, it's still a manageable par save, but not by any means an easy putt, but it gives you the chance if you do fade out left. As we see Jakob also with the bogey and Nicholas with the par. Hole six in the books. Yeah, very surprising to see two bogeys on this hole, even though we said it's a... Uh it's not an incredibly difficult hole, but really showing off that left side OB and what sort of teeth it might have. And here we move to hole 7. Par 3, 105 meters, also uphill the whole way, likely playing closer to 125 or even 130. As you battle your way up the hill through this tight corridor, these beautiful trees on both sides, this first basket is for FPO, we see the MPO basket slightly further away for an extra element of distance and difficulty. This one for most is a big driver shot straight up the gut, likely using a soft flex or some understability to fight the uphill fairway. Yeah, many players on this hole, even though it says 105 meters, will either opt for a hard thrown fairway or a distance driver. Slightly understable. Preferably, as we see Petr going for the perfect flip-up hyzer to flat shot in the middle of the fairway. Sticks it just outside the bullseye. That's the perfect showcase of how to throw this hole. And he had the perfect height. This hole is a bit of a low ceiling, as you see the branches hanging down low. Um, Niklas also going for the perfect height. Just fading before the last branches. Unfortunately, hits them, but he's still putting. Yeah, very common that someone hits either the low ceiling or plays with the width a little bit too much. Really rare to see such a clean shot as Peter's. And as Paul's here, as he fires a hyzer flip up the middle beautifully and settles it down in the bullseye. That is another picture-perfect shot as this feature card just eats up hole 7. Yeah, that was an incredible shot. And as always, the slope of the uphill really doesn't show on camera. This hole is actually quite uphill. And uh, Jakob with the perfect shot, actually going for a different line. He's going for the overstable flex shot, still down the middle, and he's well inside the circle. That's four pretty good drives on this hole. Might even bet that no other group had uh, three, actually four drives as good as uh, this group did. Niklas, to clean up that putting error on the last hole, makes it from the edge of the circle. That's a great putt there. You can see he really had to put some juice on it for the for the uphill. So we see Jakub who fired a bit deep with the flex coming downhill from the side. Another good putt there. Some great putters on this card. Some of the best in the world. Excited to see that. And Peter now was first off the tee, retains the box. You saw him hesitate for a moment there as he watches his putt drop in. That's two for two for him as he looks to be putting his game together. And Paul with the absolute park job, a short tap-in formality, as we see three, four birdies here. The star frame, I hesitated because they weren't at the chains, but here they come. A great tradition here, founded I believe in the Czech Republic, the star frame. These players will ring the chains to announce birdies all round. Yeah, that's really great to see players having some fun even in this uh, pretty competitive tournament that is the... Euro Tour stop number two, Konopiste Open. And here you see hole eight, a 90 meter par three, one of the easier holes on the course, if not the easiest. It is a straight looking shot that encourages maybe the forehand hyzer or soft turnover backhand. As you fight through these trees here under the low ceiling, you have an elevated basket that you want to make your putt on. This one does allow for quite a variety of shots, and given its shorter distance and less severe slope than a lot of the other holes, definitely a birdie that these guys want to pick up if they want to maintain pace at the top of the leaderboards. Yeah, pretty much any player with a decent forehand is really licking their chops on this hole. It's an extremely easy shot for a, for a touring level player, as we see Petr getting just inside the circle. He threw the regular skip forehand shot that we see most of the players take on this hole. Hit the line pretty good, just a little bit soft, leaving it about 9 meters short. We see Niklas putting a little bit more speed on the disc, and he 
rolls it just around the bullseye. That's a great shot there. And as you can see, there's a couple of guardian trees just before the basket. But uh, really, it's fine to go either around them or in between them with this drive. Paul going with extremely overstable driver there. Turning it over out of the hand, but still gets the skip towards the basket. That's a good result there. And we've seen a few forehands from Paul look slightly errant. Likely uh, late releasing or a touch wider than he would have liked. Jakob playing another super overstable disc gets that mega ground play there. Big skip, big slide, and he will find himself just inside the circle. Paul up first. Just off the cage. He even got the bounce upwards. I think a frustrating non-birdie for Paul. Jakob now still with a very difficult putt going downhill on the elevated. Finds some metal but not enough to stick it. There's two putts there, not quite connecting. Yeah, I think it's a great elevated basket on this hole as Peter gets it in from seven and a half meters. Because it's a really easy hole otherwise, but uh, still the elevated ma basket makes the putting a bit more difficult. Especially with the grass being really short on this green. If you miss your putt, you might be sliding or rolling pretty far away. Good birdie there from Niklas. Tapping it in with the pitch putt. And uh, even uh, grabs the disc with a little bit of a throw out of the basket. That's, that's the sign of an experienced player. Smooth game all around. Shout out to Peter for putting three together in a row now. Really nice performance on six, seven and eight. Great stuff from the young man. We move on to hole nine. A par four sitting at 288 meters. This fairway is significantly downhill, sloping ever so softly right to left. You also need to shape your shot roughly from right to left. A straight shot with some good fade. You see in the bottom right of frame, we just passed the 150 meter banner. That is a good spot to be for the majority of players. Even these guys may be going to be pushing it a bit further. On your second shot, you want to fight through this corridor with OB close to the left and far away on the right side. You want to swing a straight to hyzer shot that also avoids the OB long coming into this fast green going downhill. I think a really big tee shot allows for a easier approach, but you need to push the distance as much as you can with a nose down angle. Very true. And on, uh, apart from the distance, these players will really have to decide whether they want to be on the right side, in the middle or on the left side of the fairway. As we see, Peter going with a higher hyzering shot, which means that he's probably aiming for the left side of the fairway, which opens up more of a hyzer approach to the green. As we see Niklas playing with a, a flip-up hyzer that's still finishing well to the left. He's also going to have a flat to hyzer shot from there. Getting some good distance with the flip-up. This hole is quite severely downhill, even though it might not seem like it on a camera. But uh, some of these drives are traveling upwards to 170, 180 meters even. And a small slip it looks like for Paul as his disc comes out early and nose up. Fortunate to fight through that large tree on the left side. He'll have an open to hyzerish look but will be well short from where he wants to be I'm sure. We'll see Jakob now. The more traditional line. He's getting this to push straight and then fade. As all of these guys as you mentioned Elias are crushing this 170, 180 I think at a minimum. That's a great drive from Jakob. Yeah, certainly. There's a, there's actually on this course, it's very convenient that they have the 150 meter stakes. It's not rare to, on this hole, see somebody drive past the 100 meter stake, indicating a 180 plus drive. As we see Paul going with a slightly overstable disc. Great speed control there. This is another really quick green. So if you're going past the basket in the air, you can even skip to the OB long that it's that is only about 10 meters past the basket. As we see Niklas going with a low speed disc, even despite the long distance left of the basket. He kind of says it's high and unfortunately fades out left, but uh, he has still has a circle to look from there. And Jakob now in a prime position off the tee, still about 120, 130 downhill to get as this fades out left a little bit early, 
connects with that fast screen, gets some ground play, he'll be at about circle's edge. And given that a lot of players are throwing hyzer off the tee, it's common that they want to fade blind around the corner. As we see a bit of love from the card there, I think, cleaning some rough off uh, Jakob's jersey, perhaps. Peter now. Furthest of the bunch actually had a, quite a nose-up angle, but really got some significant distance as he fires one in. There's that fast green coming into play as he slides long OB into the spectator area, but still a manageable putt to come back for par. Yeah, that's really the mistake you want to avoid on this approach. There's a, It's pretty much open space on each side of the basket, besides the OB long, obviously. As we see Niklas from uh, far edge of circle two, coming backwards, just sailing off to the left. Um, this is another birdie, even though it seems like a really long par four. Doesn't play that long. Plays uh, closer to, well, let's not say any specifics. Plays much shorter than the 288. As we see Jakob draining a great putt from the circle's edge, or even a little bit outside. That's a great putt there. We see Peter going long OB on the approach. His par save here just tickles the chains on the left side. He will have a short tap in for bogey. Paul here with an imperfect tee shot, but a perfect approach. Complete control over that disc there as he brought it to the green and puts his putter in. He will be putting himself to three down through the front nine as well, matching Jakob. And Niklas with a good par tap in there. Finishing four under for the front nine. That's a decent start. Not a not an extremely hot start to the round, but um, all of these players still can shoot very respectable scores with this kind of start. I would say the front nine is slightly more difficult out of the two nines, so being three to four under here is uh, just okay. And Niklas, the only one on our feature card so so far, bogey free great result for him as we take a look at the standings we see Roni Rönkunen seven under through the front nine a scorching pace a few players Daniel and Hjalmar tied in sixth uh, tied in second rather at six under a few players tied in fourth that's the front nine thank you for joining us on this iconic course at an incredible venue for disc golf we are excited to be bringing you this coverage and we hope you join us for the back nine see you guys on the back <laughs>